In this tutorial, we will learn how to select multiple objects using a selection box in Unity. We will also learn how to give commands to these units by calling a function attached to them. This is a basic and very important feature in real-time strategy games and several other game genres. If you are looking for a complete real-time strategy kit with this feature along with all the other features required to make your own real-time strategy game, you can check out the real-time strategy engine available on the Asset Store which includes building placements, unit creation, a full combat system, and much more. I have posted the link for this asset in the description of the video. Let's get started with the tutorial. I have an empty scene with nothing but a cube as the ground. Let's start by adding a capsule, which we want to make into a selectable unit. I am going to add a yellow material to the capsule to make it more visible. Next, let's create a new script on the capsule, which we will call selectable object. This script will contain functions to highlight when the object is selected and to remove highlight when the object is deselected. We can also add functions here specific to this object such as moving or attacking, which can be called when this object is selected. In this tutorial, I'm just going to change the color of the object using keyboard buttons when this object is selected. Let's start by creating the required variables. We need the highlight object, which we will call the selection marker. To change the color, we need a reference of the mesh renderer of this object. And we also need a reference of the materials, which we are going to use to change the color of this object. The first function we need is for when the object is selected. In this case, we will simply enable the selection marker. Similarly, in the deselect function, we will disable the selection marker. Next, we need the functions to change the materials on this object. These functions will be called from the selection script when this object is selected. Back to Unity, let's create the selection marker. For this, we will use a plane with a cutout material to draw a circle around the capsule. We will later enable or disable this marker from our script to show when the capsule is selected. Next, create the materials for the red and the green colors of the capsule. We will change these materials on runtime using our keyboard when the object is selected. And finally, let's assign all the references to the script. The reference for the selection marker, the mesh renderer, and both the materials. And our selectable object is now ready. We can now duplicate this object to create multiple selectable objects. Adjust the position of the objects and the angle of the camera so that all the objects are easily accessible and selectable from the mouse. And also make sure that by default, the selection markers are disabled. Once all the objects are ready, the next thing we need is the selection manager. For this, start by creating a new canvas. And inside this canvas, create a simple UI image. This image will be resized and repositioned from our script to create a selection box at our mouse position. Change the color and the transparency of the image as required. Add a script to the canvas, which we will call the selection manager. Open up this script. Start by importing the Unity UI library. After this, create a reference of the rectangle transform of the selection box image we just created. Next, we need two lists of the selectable object script we just created. One for all the objects that can be selected and the second for the currently selected objects. Now for the logic to draw the selection box. In the update function, when the left mouse button is pressed, we will set the is mouse down boolean to true and store the starting position of the mouse. 
Next, we will check if the user has started dragging the mouse. For this, we will check if the mouse button is down and the current position of the mouse is more than 1 units away from the starting position of the mouse. In this case, we will set is dragging boolean to true. Also, when checking for mouse drag start, we want to check if is dragging is false. And finally, when the mouse button is released, we will set is dragging and is mouse down to false. Also, we want is mouse down and is dragging to be false when the game starts. And now, when we start dragging the mouse, we want to enable our select box. And when the mouse button is released, we want to disable the select box. Back to Unity, let's test our code so far. Assign the reference for the select box to the script and the reference of all the selectable objects. Disable the select box so that it isn't visible at the start of the game. And run the project. As we can see, when we start dragging, the select box appears on the screen. The next thing we want to do is resize the select box and reposition it based on our mouse position. Back to our script. When the mouse button is down and we are dragging the mouse, we will calculate the width and the height of the box by subtracting the start position from the current position of the mouse. And now we can set the size of the select box to this new width and height. Back to Unity, if we run our code, we will notice a small problem. If we drag towards the top right of the screen, the box resizes just as we want it to. However, if we drag towards the bottom or towards the left, the box disappears. This is because the width and the height become negative. To fix this, all we need to do is remove the negative sign by using the absolute function. And now the box is resizing just as we want it to. The last thing we want to do with the select box is reposition it. For this, just set the select box anchored position to the center of the mouse start position and the mouse current position. Simply add these values and divide them by 2. If we run the scene, we notice that the box appears at a distance from the cursor towards the top left. This is because the image is anchored at the center of the screen. To fix this, all we need to do is anchor the image at the bottom left of the screen. And now the select box appears perfectly just as we want it to. Finally, let's see how we can select these units that are under the selection box. For this, I'm going to create a new function inside update when the mouse is being dragged. In this function, we are going to check the position of each selectable object on the screen. To get the screen position of an object, we can use the function world to screen point. Once we have the screen position of the object, we can then check if it is inside the selection box. We can do this by checking if its x coordinate is between the left and the right of the box and the y coordinate is between the up and the down of the box. The left and the right of the box can be found by adding and subtracting half of its width from its x anchored position. And similarly, the up and down can be found by adding and subtracting half of its height from the y position. Once we know that the object is inside the select box, we can add it to the currently selected object list we created and then call the select me function on the object which we created earlier. And if it is not inside the select box, we can remove it from the currently selected object list and then call the deselect me function. And also before dragging, when the mouse is clicked, we want to check if there are any previously selected objects and we also want to deselect them. And that's it for selecting objects by dragging on them. We can see that our selection logic is now working perfectly. And now to call the change color function on these objects. This is pretty straightforward. We already created these functions on the objects at the start of the tutorial. And now in the update function of our selection manager, we can simply check for the desired key press. 
and then call the set color function on all the objects inside our currently selected object list. We will set the color to green when A is pressed and we will set the color to red when D is pressed. Back to Unity, let's test everything out. And our script is working perfectly. We can select objects by dragging on them and we can change the color of the selected objects from our keyboard. That's it for the tutorial. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe for more useful Unity guides.